Hello, welcome. We are playing Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe because, well actually it's because it's 29.8 degrees C in here and I would prefer not to fry all of my hardware. Um, the air cooling that's on everything is adequate but obviously when rooms get up to like 30 degrees you're in the uncomfortable territory to start with so, you know. That's a thing. We're going to change the station as well to... Where should we go with? Upbeat? Let's go with Upbeat. Mainly due to the fact that this is going to be a relaxing stream. So, let's create a new game from scratch. Uh, also, I can hardly see the chat because the cameras have moved. So this is actually running at um, 4K now. And there are some improvements over the base game, like here in the land generator, you can have Terra Genesis or the original terrain generator. That is like a full menu and there's a lot of things that have been added from the base game like the cheats are now in their own menu uh, you don't have to place a sign and stuff like that so that uh, C level is very low tree algorithm non original or improved we'll keep improved number of towns high industries high Smooth and ah, medium rivers generate. Ah, I've lost my cursor. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it doesn't like zooming that far. You're right, SP. I can just about see the chat now. God, can you imagine doing this on an old system? Right, I usually start in one of the bottom corners, so at least unlike Open RCT2, you can actually zoom right in on this. The problem is that it's still uh, up, down, left, right arrows, <laughs> as opposed to the um, to the WASD. Right, so this is going to be our home. So I'm going to build the HQ. Uh, should we knock half of this stuff down? No, we'll, we'll build it just outside. There you go, that's where we live. Okay, easiest thing to make money. There's a sawmill. There are two forests. There you go. Uh, trying to remember how to use this thing. Right, I want that. With, I'll have one track and five. Show me the coverage area as well. <laughs> there, and I need a two track one. Just there. Okay, now we get to build this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed with how long you've actually put up with the internet being a bit sketchy. I'm good, sir, buddy. Um, one of the things that's going on today is that I'm actually going to get around to ordering upgraded components for the rendering. So I won't be using the game PC anymore for the rendering. Which will be which will actually be quite nice. I I'm going 3900 x with 32 gigs of RAM. And you have to remember that at the minute the RAM that most of the things that are rendering on, minus the game PC, are on 
DDR3 and I think it's I think the speed of it is only about 122 at 1222 something like that it's not fast memory at all so the plan is to upgrade that we'll have faster memory we'll have 32 gigs of the stuff at which point at which point we'll actually have a system that should hopefully be able to render things out a lot quicker which will be nice Go to that one and load. Go to that one. And when you get there, unload all. Off you go, train one. Train two, you're going to do the same. You're going to go there. Then you're going to go there. When you get there, you're going to unload all. Go. Ah, okay. Delete removes all of the things. <laughs> Good luck with the internet. Like I say, I've, I've been there. It's very frustrating. Yeah, so hopefully, by next week, I'll actually have a system in place that can handle all of the rendering tasks that I need it to do. Which will be nice. Because currently I'm looking at hours worth of waiting around for renders. Ugh, I didn't want to do that. And it's one of those where if you, you look at it from the outside, it looks a little bit excessive. But what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to use the same system that I used to edit and render the footage. That's actually going to become the streaming system as well. Keep on pressing delete on that bloody unload all. There. Go. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the new system with the 3900X and the. It'll have a 1660 in there. It'll have 32 gigs of DDR4. Running at 3200, I think. I'm not quite sure what speed we're going to get. We're going to get the most for the cheapest. Um, and the fastest for the cheapest price so the plan is that we get all them and we also put in the capture card and then we yeah fingers crossed we'll have the henchest streaming system possible uh, with 12 cores and 24 threads and we'll also have you know, a system that can render things out and not be the noisiest thing in the world. Because currently using DL380 uh, G7s to render out footage, it's taking, it takes forever to do. And then, you know, the fans are up high because the servers, and they're not designed to be sat right next to. So there's 680 mil high pitch whiny fans as you'd expect
Oh, I've just realized why this train isn't moving. But yeah, so what you end up with is this situation where you've got a 12 car 24 thread processor, but it's actually two six cars with 12, uh, yeah, six car 12 thread processors inside of the same server sh chassis. But these are all Intel Xeon processors, so they're not very power efficient by today's standards. They pretty much chomp away at everything and you're ending up in this situation where you've got a really noisy server running right next to you and because it doesn't process quick enough it actually just deafens you for hours which isn't very fun if I'm honest I'm not in this to get deafened by to get deafened by systems. So one of the things I'm thinking is that I'm going to end up changing out the entire streaming system uh, for this new one that will also render faster because the Xeons are clocked up to 2.9 gigahertz. The base clock on the uh, 3900X is it's 3 something like 3.8 so even if it had the same amount of cores as like a single one of those it's still clock tire so it's still going to run faster um, but it's a modern processor so I was working it out based on the current gaming system and we can save 12 hours on renders just by using the and tran transcodes mainly but we can save 12 hours per transcode just by using the gaming system to do it which is an 8 core uh, 16 thread processor so the plan is if we get this 12 core 24 thread processor which is also the next generation of Next generation of Ryzen processor as well. Or oh, the current generation, I should say. Plan is we get that. And hopefully, it'll bring us some more power. Oh, I don't have enough money now. That's the plan. At 1080 it wasn't too bad, but now I'm working at 4K, it's just taken a very long time to process anything, and I can't, I can't use the game PC to do it, because obviously I need the game PC for other things. So while I'm editing on the game PC, I can have that other system, the stream system, rendering out footage that I've already edited and I can carry on with work and because it'll be more power efficient than having two 750 watt redundant power supplies both cranking away we've got one 750 watt power supply with its uh, I think it's a bronze but because we'll have that going instead you know it's it's a big deal it's like a lot of stuff that saves money in the long run plus I'm going to end up selling the I'm going to sell the three server the four servers and I'm going to sell uh, most of the stuff in the vault so with that you're looking at a 4790 an i7 4790 which is a four core eight thread processor uh, it's identical to the 7700 non-K just for 
context. They are pretty much identical. They are actually identical processors. Just different generations. So all you're getting is generational improvements, which, to be honest, when you're gaming, you don't really take advantage of anyway. Uh, so that's going to be the 4790 with a GTX 1050 Ti. That'll be one system, and I think it's got 12 gigs of DDR3 RAM. So, you know, should be fine. Uh, another one is an Intel Celeron G3960, which is a dual core. Two car, two thread. Nothing fancy there. But that's going to be another one that that gets sold. Um, and yeah, like it should it should work out well, really. Or at least that's the plan. But at the minute, I'm just trying to get as much space as I can in this room back. Because currently, all down here is taken up with two servers, an extra tower, the laser engraver, the stand for the studio lights, that currently aren't being used because uh, we've got these LED ones instead. What I usually use those for because they're my big studio lights. I mainly use them when I'm uh, doing stuff on the green screen like to camera pieces. It's just too big to kind of leave up during the week so I'd have to take them down every time I stop streaming and that's just a lot of effort and I've nowhere to put them over there because the other side of the screen is a wall there we go we've got our own little empire going now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it on fast forward and we're gonna let these four lines keep on going and we might just keep on adding like a line here, a line there, doing the same thing. So we've got this one going from the forests to the sawmill. This one going from the coal mine to the uh, power plant and the same over here. The coal mine ones are the most profitable lines. I remember that in the base game. There's a nice short run. So we can go from here to there. I have to put that about. Don't need it that long. there, that one, there we go, stick that there, and we want that, what are we at, 15,000, <laughs> nice, <laughs> that's awesome. I love how cheap things like that have become, though. Because I remember buying a a USB uh, Wi-Fi dongle, like, a few years ago now. But it cost a ridiculous amount. You know, for what it is. Whereas now the technology's come down to the point where it costs sod all for them. It's great. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, memory sticks are ridiculously cheap now. This one. This uh, Cruiser Blade 32 gig USB 3 was like a fiver on one of the Amazon deals. And currently I'm only using about 5 gigs worth of it as my Ubuntu install because that's what I'm going to put on the servers before I sell them and on the game systems before I sell them as well. <laughs> nice. 256 gig for 50 quid. That's that's next to nothing, isn't it? It's great. I love how technology has just plummeted in price. Because when I got into computers, everything was ridiculously expensive. It's like SSDs. You can now get an SSD boot drive, or one that's big enough for a boot drive, for, like, what? 30 quid and you're getting a 240 gig SSD go back about 5 years and you're up in the hundreds for that ah technically you can already get an M.2 SSD style like memory stick USB 3 like chassis and case and you just buy your own M.2 it's like an adapter but obviously you know it's the same as using a 2.5 inch drive as an external drive just a little enclosure for it but obviously because M.2 drives can be like that big you can actually get a really small USB, standard USB stick sized enclosure pretty much. Just I don't think they're ever going to be, you know, comfortable to carry around with you. Like this one will fit in your pocket. It's even got like a little thing for your keys and stuff like that. You try sticking an M. who like drive in your pocket like you're talking that wide that long it's not going to be comfortable although it does beg the question is are you just happy to see me or is that an m.2 drive in your pocket there we go we have no loan anymore Everything we make now is pure profit. And that's by setting up one, two, three coal lines and two forestry lines. I can live with it. And there you go, I think I just won the game. <laughs> this was always one of the weird things about this game. There are no real objectives apart from to build an empire, which... If you think about it, I just paid off all of my loan and I'm making money. Therefore I win, right? <laughs> Let's build a bus route. There we go. That's how you build a bus route. <laughs> uh, before we do that, I'm actually going to build a little bit of road out of this town. Just because otherwise they're going to end up blocking it in. I know they are. Stick that one there. And we'll stick this one there. Now I need a depot. I can go there.
But yeah, so the plan for later on today is to actually order the parts. It's just a lot of money to put out initially. Like, I'm looking at about £670. Somewhere around that. But hopefully selling the servers and stuff will bring most of that back in anyway. Because the main server that I use is loaded with 72 gigs of RAM and uh, 6 900 gig SAS drives. So. It's not like it's a, a weak system. It's just a system that's not right for my use. Which is fair enough. Yeah, yeah, that is his uh, his new one. I totally forgot to, when he changed his account, I forgot to add him into the uh, TV stuff. So I only realized a couple of days ago, I was looking at it and I'm like, why is there only like two of us? in the trailblazer bit. I'm like, oh, he changed his account, that's why. <laughs> it's one of those moments where you're like, oh, no. But he's back in there now. <laughs> but you know that bit where you just sit there and you're like, something's gone weird here. What What's missing? What's wrong with this? <laughs> what's wrong with this scene? <laughs> well, luckily I figured it out. Someone just clicked over the other side of the room. I don't know what it was. Oh well. <laughs> oh, why is this bus confused? Look at it. Oh, yeah. There. Happy now. After all that, it breaks down when it gets here. But yeah, so... It's going to be 700 quid out of the account later on, which is really upsetting. Because <laughs> I don't really have £700 to spend on it, but like I say, I'm going to end up with five, sis six systems that I can sell at the end. So even if I sold them for £100 each, you know, it'd still level out. So like I say, there'll be a i7-4790 which is 4-core 8-thread. That'll be with a 1050 Ti. Um, and 12 gigs of DDR3. As well as that one, there'll be a dual-core with a HD 7700 and 4 gigs of RAM. And then there'll be three servers, which are Intel Xeon X5550s uh, Dual X5550s I should say so 4 core 8 thread each so 8 core 16 threads 
and they've got like 32 to 72 gigs of RAM. And they'll have three 456 gig SAS drives. And then there's one system that's 72 gigs of DDR3, uh, six 900 gig drives, and dual X5660s. Which is like the most expensive one. <laughs> Like, even if you break it down into its components, for dual, for matching X5650 processors, yeah, it costs about like 90 ish pounds on eBay still. For 900 gig SAS drives, you're looking, for six of them, you're looking about 80 quid. For 72 gigs of DDR3 ECC memory. Again, you're up there. Near 100. So it is like a quite expensive system. So I'm hoping I should be okay to make my money back. And the thing is as well, like I say, the efficiency of having that system is going to be one of the good things. Being able to render things out in half the time it currently takes means that I can turn systems off which is a big deal there to there there to there oh there's a oh they've started a coal mine right next to it that's convenient Welcome the beast. Good to have you here. Yes, yeah, so like I say, I'm I'm hoping by next week. I think I've got to edit the farm sim stream from last week. Or the week before. I don't remember when it was. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's been too long. But that's the last stream that I should have to render out on the current hardware. You know, and take a while to render. I'm hoping that after I've done that one, I should be good. Because the processor won't turn up till Tuesday. Even with Prime, so... go. And I want a coal truck. Needs to go to here to collect coal. Needs to go there. And unload. Go. But yeah, so... It's one of those, you know how you said uh, the other week you were building a system? Oh, by the way, I don't remember if I told you, but on the Discord now there is the rig rundown. So any, like, computer questions, throw it in there. But yeah, you were saying you were building a system. Like, that amount of money is massively out of my price range at the minute. Your budget. But I wish it wasn't. <laughs> Has this train just been going back and forth all the time? Oh, you absolute ass. There. Start making us some money. No wonder our money's been going down. Yeah, if I had that budget that you have for your new gaming rig, then I would currently be specking it a lot higher than I am. Uh, a 3900X is a 400 pound processor. If I had your budget, I'd be looking more towards the 39, uh, 
50, I think it is, 3960. Or even going up into the Threadripper range with the TRX 4 sockets. The thing is, the graphics card I'd still keep as the 1660, which is what the stream system's running on, so that's what you're seeing being used as well. But I think I'd still keep that because the graphics card doesn't really make that much of a difference to what's being done. When it's editing video and rendering, it's, you know, sort of is what it is. It mainly helps me and I'm going into my proxy because I use ProRes as the proxy and that uses the GPU to accelerate it. See? This isn't just a channel for gaming, this is a channel for learning. <laughs> jump onto that discord a minute Where's the dude? I could swear I did the exact same thing I could swear that I laid it all out like that and then pinned it but fair enough yep we, we are on the same wavelength though SP <laughs> we both had the same idea but yeah, I will. <laughs> Fear not. Uh, uh, go to there. Right, we need to delete some of these trees because they're right in the bloody way. There we go. Oh, do do do. If you come up, then go there, then go there. There we go. That's one track done. And now I need a bridge. Oh, I. Yeah. If I wasn't such an idiot, things would be easy. There we go. We'll make it a steel girder bridge. That way we stand half a chance if we ever get a fast train. Yeah, don't worry. Like I say, I'll, uh, I'll give it a pin in a minute. I should probably take a look at your specs, shouldn't I? <laughs> See what you're running. Even though you have already told me, but that's not the point. Uh, last time I checked it was 1996. <laughs> but I could be mistaken. Come on, everyone loves a good classic game. Like I say though, this is main I'm mainly playing this because the room is currently 30 degrees and it's slowly creeping up. So I'm trying to keep everything, you know, everything nice and low powered. <laughs> I don't want to stress the systems. I don't want to crank out more heat than I have to. And besides, this is just a good game. <laughs> Let's not pretend it isn't.
I'm not quite sure what you're saying. The beast. I'm confused. <laughs> and no, it doesn't take a lot to confuse me. Oh, fair enough. Nicely done. On the Discord, the stream suggestions is for exactly what you think it is. <laughs> I know you say an interest SP. <laughs> Don't worry if you could spell a... There's a good chance that the bot would probably tell you off for it anyway. Oh. I wish I could place track. Two times on... I've won two times on pick a card. Oh, uh, uh, two times on pick a card. 80% of the time. Fair enough. That sounds like some good odds. <laughs> I think the beast has all of the luck at the minute. Give that one a go, SP. Yeah, I agree with that. Definitely buy a lottery ticket. If anyone's wondering, I'm just going through and there we go. Nice. That's awesome. I think your lucky number should actually become 14 then. Because <laughs> 1 and 4 seem to be working for you. Yeah, I'm still getting to grips with the Discord permission stuff. SP, so yeah. It's one of those. Like I said last time, anything that doesn't work properly, just let me know. So I can start, like, messing around and making things work. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird to be at the point now where I'm upgrading the hardware so that I can produce 4K content. If you asked me three months ago, would I be upgrading the hardware for 4K? I don't... I want to believe you. But now it's actually a thing that's happening. Now let's dump that one about... They don't need houses in the middle of a town, do they? There's a fan under the desk and I think it keeps on hitting the desk. But I can't quite tell. <laughs> oh, one shot. Oh, really? Come on. Now put that in the wrong place. Clear some more of that. 
Oh, now I've taken out some of the bloody railway. Oh, now I've put that there. <laughs> right, we're going on to this view. There. Uh, now I need this one. There we go. I got there eventually, didn't I? <laughs> Fine, we'll build this up here then. New vehicle. One of them with a mail van and an extra passenger van. Oh, I didn't tell it where to go. <laughs> go to that one, go to that one. Sure. There we go. Uh, this is just using the open SFX and open GFX one. Because I would have installed my version, but I don't actually know where my disk is. <laughs> it has been a few years since I installed Transport Tycoon Deluxe, so I thought open TTD is the next best thing. Plus it runs natively at 4K, as you can see on the stream. Or as you'll see in the highlights, I should say. But yeah, I just uh, installed the latest version of OpenTTD and installed the open graphics and sound effects. Make life easy. <laughs> Tell you what, the beast, you missed it on a Wednesday. We had some roller coaster tycoon two as well. Open RCT two. Which up until recently I didn't actually know was a thing. But now I can't see me ever going back to playing RCT without it. <laughs> Which is kind of upsetting. Which open RCT two? Hmm. Ish. So which games do you own? Do you have both Roller Coaster Tycoon and Roller Coaster Tycoon 2? Because to get Roller Coaster Open RCT 2 working, you do need Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. But then you can import Roller Coaster Tycoon content into it. So I. Hmm. See, Open RCT 2 will only work if you use if you have roller coaster tycoon 2 installed so what i did was even though i already owned them i bought roller coaster tycoon and roller coaster tycoon 2 on good old games gog.com i uh, i bought them both on there installed them and then installed open rct2 and it automatically found Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. But to import the Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 stuff, so things like Alton Towers, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, and all of the initial scenarios, I had to manually tell it where Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 was installed to.
But yeah, you do need a an actual copy of Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 to get it to work. Which is one of the things. On um on GOG, you can usually pick up Roller Coaster Tycoon and Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Like dirt cheap. And obviously you just install it, job done. I wonder if I can build a canal into a pond. So we'll do that. No? Um, oh, it needs flat land, doesn't it? Of course it needs flat land. Why won't it need flat land? Well, if we're doing flat land, we might as well do that. Let me grab a pen and write that down. Thank you for that tip. So we'll actually install it at some point. The good thing about this game is it's not difficult to install things. You know where some games like take forever to figure out how to install certain mods? This one just sort of does it straight out. It's really nice. Which is part of the reason I uh, I always default to playing this as opposed to the original version. There we go. SP, are you okay? <laughs> So which is, so the beast, what is the uh, first G GRF? Don't worry SP, we all break at some point. <laughs> we all just got to get back up. You'll be fine when your Wi-Fi dongle turns up. That's true. Oh, nice. The Beast, that sounds like, um, that actually sounds like a really good addition to the game. I'm definitely going to get that one on this. And really, i9-9900. <laughs> That's just excessive. If what you're doing is playing games, you, you don't need to go above, like, even an i7 is excessive now. But if you're gonna, if you're just playing games, uh, you say that now. There you go, that's what I might do. I might start editing all the videos and I'll just send them to USP and you can use your i9-9900 to render them out for me <laughs> because 
It saves me money. Yeah, you should be able... If you're just playing games, you should be able to get a fair few years out of an i9. <laughs> oh. A Vietnam War would, one would work. Surely you just limit the vehicles to... If there's a way you can limit the gameplay to just stick in the, like, 60s and 70s, like, range, so it doesn't develop more modern vehicles, remove some of the unnecessary industries, add dense forest instead of jungle, Should work. That'd be quite cool. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a that'd be an issue. But then again, I'm sure there's a way to count to solve that problem as well though, so. away. That's good to know. Okay, seven is my other one. Go to, click on road vehicle three, and it automatically fills it in. That's nice. I like that. That's a very nice feature. Okay, vehicle six is a new one. Where's the bus that messes around down here? Ah, there it is. You need to go to. Uh oh, I'll I'll just wait until it comes back. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to... Hmm. Maybe you could box some industries in. You know, with other industries, so you can't really get to them. And maybe have it so you just wait until the industry goes bankrupt. Because when it goes bankrupt, obviously... you'll be able to access the one that's inside. But then again, the other one's probably going to go bankrupt. No, go back there. Yeah. Yeah, that'd work. That'd definitely work. Oh nice, SP just looking on the... Oh, okay. <laughs> no rush, buddy. It's only 31 degrees here. How are we doing? I'll tell you what, we've almost made a million pounds. 
in this game. I'm quite impressed that we've almost made a million. This is the first time I've played it in a very long time though, so... Cheers buddy, hopefully I'll speak to you again. Uh, jump on the Discord if you want. Uh, the link is somewhere in the chat I think. But yeah, jump on there. There's usually a few of us hanging around on there. But yeah, cheers for hanging out. Where did I put that oil there? Uh, oh, no. No, I don't want to turn on sticky keys. Maybe jump then, that. I sat there wondering what I'd broken. <laughs> okay, I'm thinking if we get these three, there's a refinery there. Where's that big... There they are. If we get all of these to drop off at a single dock and then set a train line from the dock to a refinery or level out a bit of this ground. Let's do that. Let's make it three wide. Oh, bugger. Went the wrong way. There we go. So we'll do this. I'll tuck that behind there. And I didn't build a dock, did I? Because I'm an idiot. Pull that. Ugh. Yeah, well, screw you, authority. You're going to go to this one. And then you're going to go to that dock where you're going to unload. Off you go. You're going to go to that one. Then you're going to go to that one. Where you can go. And you need to come to the bottom one. Then go to that dock. There we go. Welcome back, SP. I was just looking on the rig rundown just before you went. And you're running 4790k. So the system I'm selling actually is just a 4790 non K. Nice, you've got 32 gigs. 980 Ti. 650 watt. Oh, nice, even water cooling it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> See, that's the thing, these AMD Ryzen processors can be overclocked, but. I don't. Mainly because there's not really much point. Like I'm, I need my processor more for long-term reliability. <laughs> I don't know, with a Z, Z97, the Z97 motherboard, I believe the Z97 chipset allows you to overclock as well. So you could do. You could still do it.
Yeah, you might as you might as well if you're getting a new PC, you might as well sell the old one. It makes sense. Oh yeah, because I did that, didn't I? There we go. You head to depot. You head to depot. Uh, well, I was looking on eBay, and forty-seven ninety Ks seem to be going for about seventy to ninety-ish pounds. I think. SSD. It's a pretty hench computer, really. What you want to do is jump on eBay and take a look at the individual components. Because it may be one of those where it's worth selling them individually as opposed to all together. Taking apart is usually easier, but if you are taking it apart to sell it, if anything, you have to be more careful with the components because you know that anything that you do, like knock it or, you know, scratch it, is probably going to affect the final price. If I were you, I'd have a look on eBay, see what all the components are going for. What you don't want to do is look at the highest price that people are getting for it. I tend to look at sort of like, I tend to look at the highest price and the lowest price and work out somewhere in between. Oh, nice. Take a look at the auctions and sort them by uh, ending soonest. Oh. I didn't mean to buy that train. I always find that the ending soonest auctions are the ones where you can really tell how much things are worth. Because if someone's listing it at £200, but it's still got no bids on it, yeah, there you go. So now you know that your processor is worth about 200 quid. There we have it. 980 Ti's are still are still good cards so they still bring in quite a bit as well I think possibly the weakest part may be the SSD and that's only because it's a used SSD and people don't tend to like them obviously Another thing as well, are you selling it with Windows installed? Yeah, there you go. Exactly. What I'd probably say 
is leave the two terabyte hard drive in there and just buy a new two, two terabyte for your system. Just because that way you know that your new system has a brand new hard drive in and and what you can do is same thing that I'm doing with the systems here which is installing Ubuntu on them that way it comes with an operating system people can check that you that the product is working when as soon as they get it they can fire that up and if they want to install windows they can install windows but to be honest a lot of games now work on ubuntu anyway so well linux in general so it would be ready for them to install steam and play but it's also a free operating system so you can put the full version on there no problems have it ready to fire up Yeah, it's, uh, it's Linux-based, so everything's open source. But Ubuntu is one of the, like, classics, and it's user-friendly. So it's got a really nice user interface and stuff like that. So if you're going from Windows to a Linux-based operating system, Ubuntu is the one that I've always defaulted to. Just because, like I say, it's really easy to get your head around when coming from Windows. And there are hundreds of walkthroughs dedicated to how Ubuntu works. So if you ever got stuck, which you can't get stuck installing Ubuntu, it's pretty difficult to get stuck doing. But yeah, if you got stuck on anything like updating which requires you to open the console and put sudo space update dash apt i think it is but the point is there's walkthroughs online which are literally step by step with images you know it's just a really nice well-made operating system Which is why I like it so much. And things like these servers aren't really designed to run stuff like Windows 10. On the HP site it actually says that they don't support Windows 10 and they can't run it. But I just installed it and it works fine. But obviously when I sell them I'm going to stick Ubuntu on there. And that way people can just get up and running straight away if they're using the servers for what they're intended for and they want it to be Linux based it's already ready to go they just have to install whatever like programs and software they're using with it which makes life a lot easier for them and if they want to install someone else they can install someone else but it's just one of those when you receive a product you want to check that it's working straight away Or at least I always want to check that it's working straight away. And so installing something like Ubuntu gives them that chance. Otherwise they have to sit there and go through the install process of whatever they're wanting to run on it. All the while the hours are ticking by, the days are ticking by in the return window and as far as they know the system doesn't work
I think when selling a computer, it is always good to include a hard drive. Like, usually I'll put the cheapest hard drive that I have available, like in the office, in there, and sell it with that. Just because it works on two levels, they get to like have a system that they can run straight away. And, you know, you get a new hard drive out of the deal. I have before today bought a... One of the things you could do is if you go on Amazon and search for Kingston SSD, there are some 120 gig ones that are, I think they're around £22, something like that. I've sold systems where I've bought a brand new SSD and one of those and stuck that in the system and installed Ubuntu on it. Like, they're not the most amazing SSDs, but the point is that they've then got a system that they can start using straight away. And a lot of things nowadays are online anyway. Like, all of my, like, Excel spreadsheets and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'll have an SSD in the system with space to do things, especially if you install Ubuntu, which is, like, 30 gigs. But yeah, a lot of things are online now anyway. All of my Excel documents are now in Google Docs. So, to be honest, having a massive hard drive is not really necessary for the day-to-day -day tasks that people tend to do on computers. Like, obviously, I'm dealing with ProRes footage and I'm dealing with, like, 4K game capture and stuff like that, so... Hard drive space is one of the things I have to consider, but for most people now, if you just have a computer that you can use, the Intel Celeron system, that dual core one, is being sold with the exact hard drive I just mentioned, the 120 gig SSD from Kingston. Just because a system like that is mainly designed for, you know, working in the cloud and doing stuff like that. I used to use that system as my desktop that I remoted into the servers from. So I'd have that one under the desk because it was pretty much silent because there's no power draw from it. <laughs> have that one under the desk like, and then just remote into the server nice and easy. Nothing fancy, nothing nothing excessive, just a nice basic system so that you can be productive. Which for a lot of people is all they want. They just want a system that will allow them to, you know, do the work. On an unrelated side note, I've decided that Friday streams are just going to be relaxed, you know. Talking and playing a game that doesn't take too much concentration. Make life easy. And at some point we are going back to open RCT2. Definitely. Like I say, I only had to cut it short because the room is ridiculously warm.
that notification will go away soon. But that means someone downstairs has turned on their the PC. And is connecting a PS4 controller to it. Yeah, okay, I don't want to add a device. I don't want to tap to set up a wireless controller because it's the one downstairs. Oh, look at that short run. Yeah, like I say, I always try and sell systems with hard drives in and make it so that people can use them straight away. There's nothing worse than waiting for hardware. Well, judging by the fact that OEMs tend to charge an excessive amount when you include Windows, uh, yeah, that seems reasonable. That actually seems very reasonable, considering what we just found out about the price of things. One thing, if you were selling it on somewhat like eBay, is... So, the sales on eBay tend to be like free for the listing and then you just pay 10% of the final sale value plus shipping cost and then obviously PayPal take their 3.5% or whatever but what I tend to do is it costs money for extras like adding a 13th picture to the listing or adding a reserve price to your auction so what I tend to do is I set the minimum bid to the lowest I'd be willing to sell it for. So if you were willing to sell it for £450, I'd set the starting bid at £450, and then if people bid on it, then great, you're getting more than you thought you were. And if people don't bid on it, then, you know, you can reconsider your pricing, or maybe part it out, or, you know, any of those things. But in doing that, you're effectively setting a reserve price without setting a reserve price. Well, like I say, what I'd do is I'd take the SSD that has Windows on. I'd take the SSD and put that in your new system because if nothing, even if you bought a new SSD for your system, you would then have, you'd be able to transfer your copy of Windows over to your new SSD for the increased reliability, but you'd also have your current SSD in the system that you could use for game installs. You know, so you get like faster game load times than a standard hard drive. That's the thing that you'd be able to do. But then I'd probably, of the two drives, I'd leave the two terabyte in that and install Ubuntu on it. But even like that, having just a two terabyte hard drive in, I'd still say, I'd probably still list it at like 490 because also you have to remember how you perceive things when you go to buy them.
Yeah. But think about it. If you're looking at a system and you see 500, your brain says that's half a grand. If you see 490, your brain sees the four first and you're like, oh, that's reasonable. Perspective. <laughs> Plus, you've got to also include your shipping costs. So a computer will probably cost between 10 and 15 pounds to ship. So if you see 490 plus 10 pound shipping cost, that puts you up to the 500. But you're like, yeah, but 10 of it's for shipping. So eh. you're more willing to do that. And yet it eats into your money a little bit, but it's worth doing. Just because it'll increase the interest normally. Even better is if you offer free shipping. So another thing is if I'm including free shipping in a product, I'll work out the shipping cost and then usually like divide it by two and add that to the list price so that technically you're still paying for half of the shipping but I'm paying the other half out of my money. What you want to do is search Google for, what's it called? I think it's eBay price calculator, something like that. It's a very basic website and it's pretty much just got, like I say, a thing in front of you and it'll say sale price, uh, shipping price, which are the two that you're charging. Underneath is how much your shipping is going to cost and the initial price that you paid for the product. Yeah, there you go. eBay fees calculator. Thank you. <laughs> I've got that pinned next to my eBay sales tab. <laughs> but it is a godsend. It'll, it gives you all the information you need. So it'll tell you how much eBay and PayPal are going to take from the account, from the total and how much ends up in your account. So if you left the uh, total price at the bottom, how much you paid for the product, if you left that blank, that'll, that end result will be how much turns up in your bank account at the end of it all, or in your PayPal account at the end of it all. But bank transfers are free, so it's fine. <laughs> So sold price on there is how much your item sold for on eBay. The item price is how much you paid for it to start with. And then shipping, like I say, I'd guess it'd be about maybe 10 to 15 pounds something like that for a computer the good thing is as well because you're buying a new computer to replace it with you can actually use the packing materials that you're new computer comes with you know like the this case box yeah oh yeah i always go up to 20 on it just because then you can't be disappointed <laughs> but yeah so you'll be getting a box with your case you use that case box and the packing materials that come with it 
and you put the system in that and that's your box to ship it in nice and easy and that way you don't have to buy anything either it's like the other day when I was talking about how I like efficiency and how I had to sort the computer out to be efficient same thing you're looking for the most efficient way to get your product from A to B whilst not spending too much on it because obviously you're in there to make money you're not in there to like give people a free computer If you can't already tell, this is pretty much how I make my non-ice rink season money <laughs> and stay afloat. Just tends to be a case of buying computer hardware and then selling it on. Nice 391. Well, there you go. So if your shipping costs were actually less than £20, then if they were f like £10, you're looking at £401.75p. To be honest, you should be able to get your shipping for about £9 using eBay's built-in tools. So I tend to use the either DPD or what's the other one? Or UPS. UPS tends to be about £20, and I book that one through the UPS site. DPD, I book through the eBay site, because it's cheaper. And I do the drop-off one. Because I'm quite near to a couple of DPD shops. There's like a corner shop down there that's, you know, nice and easy. And also saves a little bit so they don't have to come to me. Exactly. A printer and you're done. But yeah, I tend to use those two. And then obviously small things, Royal Mail. But if you buy it through the eBay thing, it is nice and easy. Everything's filled in for you as well, which makes it makes it really nice. But like I say, that calculator is a lifesaver. But it might even be worth working out how much you could part it out for. Because it could be that you'll actually get more money from parting it out. Because you'll get the full price for CPU, for the graphics card, for the RAM for the hard drive and like say SSD I'd keep you'll get the full motherboard price as well could sell motherboard and CPU as like a little bundle together yeah exactly just just take it to the shop and get them to print it <laughs>
Time to upgrade all these to electric. Uh, yeah, there are weird things on eBay to do with, like, top-rated sellers and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the 100% feedback. What you could do is just uh, click on the feedback profile. Click on that and it'll tell you, you know, their feedback percent and stuff like that. God, I lost all perspective of where I was then. There we go. This is the problem with having loads of different lines knocking around all over the place. But I don't think I've built this far. No. It looks like we're alright. Okay, so I'm thinking we start at this side and work our way back. You, go there. <laughs> Catching it before it just starts loading. That can go away. That can go away. That can go away. We're just waiting on this one to get back. And then we'll put the electric train on. Sell the diesel. There we go. First train upgraded. This one. Oh, nice. Well, you enjoy your food, mate. Yeah, not a problem, buddy. You enjoy your food. Like I say, I try and, like, stick around on Discord as much as I can, but... You know, <laughs> it's one of those. See the biz, bud. That one I just did dinner. Done that one, done that one. Right. Three trains here. You come back. Uh, do do do. You go back, and you go in. Now we buy three of these. Off you go. you go and off you go so another three trains changed oh it's doing that thing where it doesn't like zooming out this far again okay they're done that's done that's done do them and then go south
try and keep track of what I've upgraded and what I haven't upgraded. Uh, yes, that's all. There we go. You go to there. You stop loading and go there. to do that, did I? Fine. Go there. Go there. When you get there, unload all. Go. Yes. I guess the right track. <laughs> I was worried about that one. How are we doing? 31.5 degrees C. Can I build electric ones? Thank you. According to the weather, we're supposed to have thunder at some point. As soon as I hear thunder, if it's before this stream ends, then that's when this stream ends. <laughs> because I need to go outside and like lie down in rain. <laughs> and not be boiling anymore. Because these last few days have been an absolute killer. And, and I've only got 10 bottles of alcohol left. 10 bottles of Budweiser. The channel's beer by bloody media. And I've only got 10 bottles of alcohol. I should be ashamed of myself. <laughs> One thing you can tell when it's been very warm is I went out to the shed, which is where all of the beer lives, about two days ago. I thought, oh, I'll have a nice cold beer on a very warm day. I'll sit outside, I'll get some fresh air. You know, we've all been locked down for months, so I thought I'll sit in my back garden, I'll have some beer. I'll relax. The computer was rendering at the time as well, so... I couldn't exactly get on with anything. I picked up a beer from the free, from the shed and it was boiling. Like that shed is always cold. That's why you keep things in a shed. Because the shed is usually always cold. Nope. So warm that even the sheds are warm. Why does it accept nothing? Oh, it accepts nothing. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so why is there no train on this section? Did I delete it? The stream replay will tell me, but... I'm going to assume that I've deleted it then. 
like an idiot. Yeah, so actually one of the things I'm going to do is I'm probably going to call... Excuse me. What I'm probably going to do is call this stream in about 15 minutes. So it'll have been two hours. Just because I need to cool the room down. It's now 31.6, so it is still going up. It's not raining outside yet. So let me switch over to the CCTV. It's not even clouded over. So much for this rain that was due at 10 past five, eh? Another thing I'll need to do. Save that to, sure, there. We'll save it as that. <laughs> <laughs> Should we make an airport? Let's let's build a let's build up this town. This is another thing I like. That it has all of these sub like subclass things going on. Okay, so that's gonna be we're gonna put that there one out because then we can build everything into it it's not from here to level two not there wasn't it was it oh, i need to go two more high okay Why did the city think that they can... Oh, it's the bloody road. Right, we're going to build the bypass then. Uh, let's do that. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Delete that bit of road, delete that bit of road. Lift. Ugh, it's bloody building in the way. And the local authority are refusing to allow me to do it. It's okay though, because I think I might have got this level enough. As to where I can do this. There we go. Strange how it can level it like that though, isn't it? Right, so now this awful road can go there we go and now we can level the ground like that and we can build our airport if I'd have leveled all of the right bit oh there's a house on top of it of course there's a house right fine let's go and one out then Oh, and now they're refusing to allow it. Let me just bribe them. How is my how is my rating appalling with these people? I have done absolutely nothing but be nice to these people. Right. Great. I bribed them and now I can't do anything. Oh, I've not got enough enough cash. Oh. Um. Bugger. At least we still seem to be making money. That's good. I was gonna like be really nice to this town. I was gonna 
build him an airport. I was going to build a train station on the airport. I was going to build like a... Well, I can see the issue. Oh. The coal mine's gone. Oh yeah, because we have to go into there and delete the train, don't we? There you go. That's that taken care of. Yeah, but I still got a thing. Okay. Do you guys like me yet? Still appalling. Fine. Advertise. Advertise. Make them love me. Close this. What if I increase the amount of buses? That'll help. We'll give them more buses. Go there, then go to that place, then go to there, then go to there. Road Vehicle 4 is what we want to clone, let's bring that over here, go, you, go to Road Vehicle 4, go, you, go to Road Vehicle 4. Go. Road Vehicle 1. Do that. There we go. Let's see if that helps. Let's see if they like me now. I don't want to fund local road construction yet. But I do believe that means that they're warming to me. That's good. They're allowing me to build, buy things and... Oh, no, they just stopped that from being a thing I could do. Come on, I've got a bunch of buses running for you here. Doing the best I can. We will up and move our, our HQ to a different town. We'll just leave them. All I want to do is build them an airport. It shouldn't be this difficult. I, I just want to build. But they refuse to allow it. Because they're idiots. Fine. You can have disruption instead. The middle of May. And I'm going to fund road construction. There. Deal with that. How do you win people over? Usually with aggression. It would seem. Really? Oh, 
Oh, that lump's always going to stay in it because of that bit of... Oh, my God. Oh, really? <laughs> I just want a bit... Right. No. You know what? If we're that appalling, they can start off. How do you feel about us? Appalling. Great. What about you? How do you feel about us? Outstanding! We're moving up the road. Oh, you people have made a wise decision. Congratulations, you guys get the airport that the others couldn't because they were too busy being pricks. Oh, what? Oh, great. Okay, they now think that we're appalling. Tell you what, though. Oh, right, no. You guys, go on. Outstanding still. Good. Do you want an airport? You do, don't you? You do want an airport. And they refuse to allow it because I've modified the ground. It seems to be how this works. Very poor. Oh, we're only very poor. For new buildings. I'm going to help your town grow. Then you have to like me. That's how that works. Come on. Come on. God, I'm literally trying to improve your town right now. I'm doing everything I can. And I don't have the money for that. There we go. Why do they hate us? Why? What have I done? I literally funded new buildings in there. There we go. We got it. We have an airport. Right. What we also want is... Oh, one of... Oh, you refuse to... Al You're not going to allow me to build anything, are you? It let me build that. Okay. Okay. Um... No. It's like they can't see that I'm trying to do good for them. Oh, no, I don't want you to go up there. There. Okay, we have an airport. <laughs> it's not what I imagined, but we have one. And it's got a lot of passengers waiting. Shit. Um, I need a place to go. There. You guys will accept me, won't you? Of course you will. Delete that. Do some landscaping then I'm going to build you a large airport oh yes it actually worked <laughs> okay so we want 
95 passengers there. 202. There we go. 300. 300. You're going to go there. And then you're going to go there. And you need to copy that. Let you set off. As soon as it comes onto the screen. There we go. See what we can do. Got a very itchy nose now. Oh wow. Um, the airports may not have been a good idea. I have thousands of passengers waiting up here. Okay, uh, I need another airport to send them to, I think. Oh. I don't want to make it too busy, though, is the thing. We'll get another airport here. This small place looks right primed for an airport. We delete a little bit of the road. There you go. They get an airport now. They're lucky out there. Is it? Okay. Oh, I've done it again. I've zoomed out too quickly for it. You're going to go from there to there. Begin. You're going to go from there to there. Begin. And you're going to go from there to there to there and back to there. There we go. There we go, uh, everything's a lot more reasonable up here now. That was always another thing I enjoyed about Transport Tycoon. The windows actually snap together, so you can make blocks of them. It was always a nice feature. You better think I'm outstanding. Oh, we're good. Let's build a statue of the company owner and fund new buildings and do a large advertising campaign. And we're also going to relocate. There you go, there's our new HQ. There you go, we now are in Primbridge. There we go. New road construction. Town grows every 200 days. Can live with that. I think that's a good time to call it, really. 
we're making a lot of money still. We have aeroplane, we have land, sea and air all covered. Let's save the game. Yeah, I didn't think you'd be able to write there. Um. We'll just save. Save it to public documents. Save. I'll do. <laughs> Yeah, so that's going to do it for today, I think, because it is now 31.7, so I'm going to hope that it's going to rain soon, because quite frankly, I don't do well in this kind of heat. It's just not fun, like at all, in any way, shape or form. Just let me mute the game. Stick them over there. But yeah, that is actually really fun. It is just as fun as I remember. Um, and it's a nice chilled out game. So you can sort of relax while playing it. And the room hasn't heated up that much compared to last time. Uh, if we'd have been on something like GTA 5 or a more modern game, like even though this is using like modern graphics, you know, it's still an old game and it still doesn't take that much to run, which is really nice on a day like today so it doesn't boot out too much heat from the back of the systems and yeah so now i'm gonna go and sort out all the project files uh start sorting the vault as well and yeah i will be back on monday uh we have buggy or bust race number nine second to last episode in the series uh before it takes a couple of weeks break and we're also uploading on monday wednesday and friday on youtube and yeah that about does it so as always we are live on twitch every monday wednesday and friday at 4 p.m uk time we... <laughs> we are live on twitch every monday wednesday and friday at 4 p.m uk time you can catch highlights of streams and other random videos like buggy or bust on the youtube channel every monday wednesday and friday as well uh you can follow us on facebook twitter instagram and you can come and join the Discord, where I'm usually lurking. Uh, we have a bunch of like threads open now, so like come on over if you've got suggestions, throw them in there. We usually read everything there, so it's all good. And yeah, uh, the Zazzle store is open. We have a bunch of shirts in there. Um, feel free to go buy them. I'd be wearing one, but it is absolutely boiling right now in this room. And to be honest, this shirt ain't gonna last long either. So yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining. Thank you for following. Uh, yeah, and I will see you next time. See you in a bit. Thank you.